So this would be how to do an oil change on your 971 Panamera, or even if you had a 970, I'll show you how to do it. So you two options, you can either do it at home, or you can do it on a lift. So I'm going to show you both options. So step one is going to be opening the hood. This is where you're going to put the oil. So if you're doing it at home, I would suggest you raise the car. So I put it in the highest mode in slip mode. I put it on some ramps and then I put a jack stand right behind as you can see. That way if it did the ramp failed or anything, it wouldn't get squished. And then you would just proceed to remove all these bolts. But I'm going to, I'm just showing you how to do this. I'm going to do it on um, a lift. It's just a lot easier. So what I always do is I always make sure the car is hot. That way the oil does drain a little faster. So because at home I didn't actually lift the wheels off the ground, I didn't have to disable my air suspension. But when I take it to the shop, I'm going to have to disable my air suspension. So if you don't know how, I'll put a link in the description of how to disable your air suspension. Okay, so I'm going to be using a 16 millimeter wrench to take off the strut tower and the engine bay. It's the only way you can get the hard plastic piece off here, the engine cover. And underneath that is going to be your oil filter. So this side is loose. I'm going to go check the other side make sure that one's loose. Once they're loose, they're just going to lift out. You don't have to take the bolts all the way out or anything. Okay, that's them. Make sure that I push these back so they don't just slide out. I don't want to drop anything. Okay, one, two, three, and four. These are the clips that are holding it on. <laughs> If you were going to upgrade the turbos, they're right there. You'd have to take off the seat shield. And also, if you're going to do your downpipes, that will maybe be coming soon in a video shortly. Okay, next step is going to be to take this oil filter cap off. That way, when I lift the car, I can take the drain plug out. And you want the little airflow, so it'll basically make it drain faster. Okay, so now we're going to remove all of these bolts. They are T25s, and there's going to be 19 of them. You can just follow along and take all of them out. And then it is clipped into the front bumper, so you're just going to slide back on it. Okay, you need a 10 millimeter wrench, and this is going to take out four of these little bolts. They're right here. So be careful. Once you get this starting to come out, you're going to find a lot of debris. This is one that's got quite a lot of rocks and stuff stuck under there. So that's why I look confused. Stuff's falling out. And all you're going to do is pull towards you, and the whole thing does come out. So this is how it's going to differ. If you have a model 930, your oil filter is actually located underneath this brace. So you're going to use a 13 millimeter socket and you're going to remove the six bolts to take this off and you'll just see it. So just make sure that it is there on the 970. That's where it is on most of the engine models. Unless you have a turbo, then it's up top. So since I have a 971, mine's at the up top, so I'm not taking this off. And then here is a T45, and this is what's going to remove the oil drain. So this is pretty easy to take off. It's on there with 25 pound-feet of torque. So that's what you're going to set it back to when you take it off. And that's the same torque spec for the oil filter on top. So cost-wise, the ceiling plug, which this is, cost me £3.32. And the ceiling ring, which this also has, it just make sure it gets a good seal, is a one it's a dollar. So it's a pound and the filter on top it cost me 23 pound so not too expensive you see the oil definitely changing i'm checking the consistency of it there's no nothing in it there's no metal flakes there's no weird foam or discoloration so we're just going to leave it let it sit i let mine sit for an hour because we had the time to do so and then i'm using a new one obviously and i'm putting it back in i'm going to go counterclockwise first to make sure it seals good and then i'm going to go clockwise that way i don't strip it I'm going to hand tighten it as much as I can before I torque it in. So that is 25 pound feet of torque. Okay, time to go back up. Now we're going to use a 32 millimeter socket and we're going to take off that oil filter. That is also just held on with that 25 pound feet of torque, like I mentioned. So I'm going to use a towel, a shop towel, to make sure I don't drip on anything else in the engine bay. Make sure you do dispose of all these things correctly. So I'm going to pull this out. You want to make sure you orient the new one the same way this one is. So I'm going to have a quick look at it. I'm going to notice that the side that's out has no writing on it. But the side that's in actually has writing. I don't know if you've seen that. So I'm going to make sure when I put the new one in, the writing side goes in. Okay, I'm going to use a pick to pull off this O-ring. And I'm going to use some of the oil and lubricate the new one. And then I'm just going to put that one on. 
Okay, same as everything I do. I go counterclockwise first just to make sure it's seated properly, and then I go clockwise. I hand tighten it. I'm going to use a wrench and tighten it a little bit, and then I'm going to torque it back down to 25 pound-feet of torque. So depending on if you have a turbo, a non-turbo, a hybrid, they do a, a, they do want different amounts of oil, and obviously a different one. Since this is the 4E hybrid, I'm going to be putting in between 6.8 and 7.25 liters. So the oil that I'm using is the ESP Mobile One, and it's a 0W30. So since I've got two 5-liter jugs, I'm going to fill it with one 5, and then I'm going to actually check the oil and see what my level is actually at. And then I will top it up. It's much easier to do this slowly than have to pull some out. So once I get it kind of in the middle, I'm going to be happy for now. I'm going to drive it and then I will recheck it once I'm. Okay, now to put everything back on. So we're going to be using this 10 millimeter socket for the bolts. And then we've got the T25 drill bit to put on the rest of them. So I'm going to start off by shoving it into the front and getting those clips in. Put my two bolts in place and then I will go back to the end here and put in the four bolts in the back. And then I'm just going to use my drill and put in the rest of my T25s. I do have my drill set to a thing so I won't accidentally go too far in. So if you have a drill can do that, just set it on low. Once I am done, I do go back and recheck every bolt, making sure that they are all in, that I haven't forgotten anything and they're all tight. So while I was under the car, I made sure it wasn't dripping before I did put on the guard back on and I'm gonna lower the car, re-enable my air suspension and I will also put on the engine cover and the strut tower back. Okay, and then we're just gonna set the service indicator. Since I am actually at a automotive specialist shop, I had them just set it for me. But I did try to set it myself with my little handheld tool, but unfortunately, it just it just wouldn't let me do it, which is really annoying. It does say it would work on this car, and I do have the iCarsoft, the CR Plus, but I couldn't be bothered to reach out for customer support, so I just had the shop do it for me. Hopefully that helped you guys and please like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps us.